Hello, my name is Dr. Surya Kumar and I'm a senior clinical researcher at Oxford and a visiting assistant professor at the Karolinska. Now, prostate cancer is the commonest cancer in men in the Western world and the second commonest cause of male cancer death. Over 110 men a day are diagnosed with prostate cancer in the UK alone. Now, the vast majority of these diagnoses are men who've got localised prostate cancer, i.e. cancer that hasn't spread outside of the prostate. And the most frequent way we treat these cancers are either with surgery, so-called radical prostatectomy, or radiotherapy. Despite these treatments having been around for decades and millions of men having undergone them, we still don't have good quality data comparing the two. So what we did in this study is we took men treated for prostate cancer in Sweden from 1996 onwards, captured in the National Prostate Cancer Register of Sweden, which is an excellent data set, captures over 98% of all cases, and that data set has been merged with eight other national data sets within Sweden, including the inpatient and the cause of death registers. And this allows us to get a vast array of information on important covariates, such as age, PSA, Gleason score, tumor stage, but also patient important uh, covariates, like comorbidities, socioeconomic status, marital status, even county residence. We used prostate cancer mortality as our primary outcome, and we ended up with 34,515 men that had been treated initially by either surgery or radiotherapy who were followed up for up to 15 years. We did finding gay competing risks analysis to adjust for competing causes of death. And we also balanced the groups at baseline by using propensity score modeling, traditional multivariable analyses, inverse probability of treatment weights, and uh, propensity score matching. And what we found was very interesting. In patients with low risk prostate cancer, the risk of death from prostate cancer was very low, and therefore there was no real difference between those treated surgically and those treated with radiation therapy, although there were slight improvements for surgery, but by and large, patients did so well that it didn't really matter what treatment they got. In those on the other extreme, who had got advanced prostate cancer, disease that had gone beyond the prostate, they had a very high risk of death from prostate cancer. And again, there were no significant differences between modalities. For the men in the middle groups with intermediate risk prostate cancer and high risk localised prostate cancer, those that were treated with radiotherapy initially had a 1.76 times higher mortality from prostate cancer than those that got surgery up front. Turning that around, surgery had a significant survival benefit over radiotherapy for men with intermediate and high risk prostate cancer. Now, this was not a randomised controlled trial, it's not prospective, and therefore there are limitations, especially considering things like confounding by indication. So what we did was a sensitivity analysis that looked specifically for residual confounding, and I'd encourage you all to look at that analysis in the main paper. What we found from that sensitivity analysis was that residual confounding was highly unlikely to account fully for our findings. Another problem with our data set is that we didn't have doses of radiotherapy. And it's definitely true that radiotherapy doses were lower in Sweden in the late 90s than they were in the late 2000s. And therefore, one might expect that this impacted our results. If that were to be the case, we would find that the differential benefit for surgery would be greater in the early years of the study than the later years. So we did an analysis by year of treatment and showed that actually wasn't the case. The benefit for surgery was roughly the same, regardless of the year of treatment. We have to also remember that our study only looked at the initial treatment. We have no information about secondary or later treatments. So we can't make any comment about those. All we can say is that it appears from our study that surgery is superior to radiotherapy in survival terms for men with, lo uh, with localised prostate cancer, especially those with intermediate and high-risk disease, when it's given as an initial treatment. Now, as prostate cancer clinicians, when we counsel our patients, we can't just look at differences in survival between treatments. We have to consider other things, such as adverse event profiles, toxicities, uh, complication rates, and quality of life. And it's important as clinicians that we have a good dialogue with patients regarding all these aspects. We simply hope that our study helps inform the oncological aspects of that dialogue. Thank you.